He talks to me about horses. I used to live on the course. One of the loves of my life. Epsom. I knew it like the back of my hand. I was one of the best-known faces down at the paddock. What a marvellous open-air life. <laughs> he talks to me about horses. You only read their names in the papers. But I've stroked their minds, I've held them, I've calmed them down before a big race. I was the one they used to call for. Max, they'd say, there's a horse here, he's highly strung. You're the only man on the course who can calm him. It was true. I had, um, I had um, an instinctive understanding of animals. I should have been a trainer. Many a times I was offered the job, you know, a proper post by the Duke of... Uh, well, I forget his name. One of the Dukes. But I had family obligations. My family needed me at home. Oh, the times I watched those animals thundering past the post. What an experience! Mind you, I didn't lose. I made a few bob out of it. And you know why? because I always had the smell of a good horse. I could smell him. And not only the coats, but the fillies, because the fillies are more highly strung than the colts. They're more unreliable. Did you know that? No, what do you know? Nothing. But I was always able to tell a good filly by one particular trick. I'd look her in the eye, you see. I'd stand in front of her, and I'd look her straight in the eye. It was a kind of hypnotism. And by the look deep down in her eye, I could tell whether she was a stayer or not. It was a gift. I had a gift. <laughs> and he talks to me about horses. <laughs>